Hello guys. Welcome back to the Beyond Sky channel. So in the today's tutorial, I am going to show you the difference between beauty AOVs and the utility AOVs. So I will first start with this beauty AOVs. So before I start, I will just like to mention that I have set up the Asus CG workflow. And if you don't know how to do that, then you can just uh, click on this I button up right there. And you can know how to do it. And uh, yeah. Beauty AOVs are basically contains the, the AOVs like diffuse, diffuse direct, diffuse indirect, and then uh, di diffuse ambient, and then uh, ambient operation. Ambient operation is actually not the part of the beauty. If you want to know more in depth about it, then you can check out my previous video. I will keep the link in the description. And uh, then it has specular direct, specular indirect code direct then code indirect and there are more like glossy and so on so to this video our main focus will be utility AOVs so what is the utility AOVs utility AOVs are also called as tag passes tag passes are not part of the beauty but it's additionally rendered to give control and more flexibility in compositing to help enhance the scene or shot every tag AOV have its own job so I will go one by one so you can know the difference. So we will first start with the normals. What is normal? Normal pass is being used for relighting in such way like to fix the lighting or to add more directional light or kind of that. So if I go to the each of this channel like RGB, red, green, then blue, it gives us three of the dimensions RGB and we can just shuffle out and use it. So normal pass is actually being used for rewriting the CG render or the scene. Like if you are lacking being lighting in some cases, or as let's say uh, you are adding a Tory fire in this part, and you want to add a light, reflecting light of that fire on this tank, then you can do it this normal pass. If you want to know how to do that, like reality, then you can comment down and let me know that you are looking for it. I will have to go a little bit in depth. So I will have to leave a separate video for it. I will go to the world position pass. Take a position pass. And uh, position pass gives XYZ coordinates of 3D world space. By which we can know the actual position coordinates of any 3D object or environment. So in this case we have this type. And uh, we can also create 3D point cloud representation on the CG scene. So we can know that in the 3D world where the position is, it can be used to create environment fog also. It also helps us to see where to keep the light while relighting the scene by creating point cloud. So this last point I will cover up in the next video where I will teach you how to relight. So I will show you one thing, how to create point cloud, position to point, sorry. Yes, just take a position to points and in the surface point, Select position, surface to our select the orbits. Yeah, okay. So you can already see, you can also tweak these uh, things like point size so you can see in more detail. So let's say you want to add a Tory smoke fog or something like that on this part like uh, in between the tag so what you can do is you can take this node create a point cloud representation and you can take a card then you can give it any position you want so this gives us the direction that we actually want instead of just putting it anywhere so this is why it's being used. Position pass is actually very useful. And I can make a separate, completely separate video on it. It will be a very interesting part. So I will name the surprise with it. Now we will move on to the UV. UV pass actually renders the UV of the 3D object. By itself, we can attach the tourist sticker, texture, footage or anything to apply on surface of the geometry in home. So let's say if you want to apply any texture on this part, or like whatever on this uh, entire tank so what you can do you can just take the HTML you can connect the HTML pipe to the UV and 
in the source you will attach the your texture sticker or footage or whatever so you can see how it's looking up here uh, you can also add any text or anything like it so this is also a very useful pass when you want to add any sticker or something like that in the post and yeah this is a very main topic motion vector so if motion vector is rendered from arnold renderer then you will have to shuffle the layer to only motion or else it will create false motion blur so what i mean by that is you will have to shuffle the motion vector uv to the only motion okay only then you will get the right motion blur or else it will look weird i mean it won't work logically so in this example this is my render okay and here i have the vector blur and i have selected the motion vector okay and uh, motion amount i have kept to 18 everything else is just default and in this here i have shuffled out the motion vector to the motion okay give you the example how we can do this i'm taking another shuffle node you can attach it here then uh, here we will extract the motion vector pass and in this rgb select then go to the new here give the name of motion then just press tab and by default you will get forward u forward v backward u backward v then even just you don't have to do anything just click the okay i will delete this so you can understand my viewer is correct here so if i go to this motion okay so it was not visible due to the channels were not connected so yeah now you can see that so we have shuffled the motion vector to the motion and now we have to copy this motion to our main stream of the con so let's assume this is our main stream of the con which is coming well top to bottom and what you have to do, do is take the copy rule i will delete this i will create from scratch i will connect this a pipe to our shuffled out motion and i will disable this rgb and in this layer copy i will select motion so i will look from here now so you can see here it is motion and if i enable disable it then you will be able to see that it's now copied so now if i take a vector blur here so why actually i did this is because of when parallel renders the motion vector as a motion vector name near the motion blur using vector blur so it doesn't gives us the right motion blur it instead it gives the motion blur in only the y axis and not in the x axis so i have seen that problem many times so usually this is what i do yeah so and now the z depth so z depth are created on the basis of camera position towards where it's pointing so what i mean by that is uh, here i have taken a camera so this our x direction okay you can see in this left model so our y x axis and this is z axis so if i change the rotation of camera then if i compare them if you see in the left bottom side the z axis is directing toward this direction and the x is on this direction as a world position and when we are over the camera the camera has also changed its z direction so z what does it is actually from where the camera is and let's say here is your object 3d objects here cube or whatever so where your camera is so it create the depth according to the position of the camera so it will create this z depth from the camera position till the far plane so if i yet if i show you in the position pass so this is our z axis so our position pass contains the r and d value which is x y z coordinates so this is the z coordinate if you see this is not exactly how the z depth works so this is why we can't create the z depth for using this world position so z depths are being created from where your camera is and till the far plane so the coordinates the z coordinates works on the basis of camera when you enter the z depth so z depth is the used to add the defocus throughout the scene and to add fog and haze to the scene additionally it can also be used as mask in some cases like you want to add a toy stock footage after some mountains you can create a mask something like this 
Well, very hard mask. And now you can add to this stock footage, which can be after this, when you invert this uh, alpha. So now we will move on to the crypto Mac. So crypto light is a very important along this, whatever uh, utilities we have. So by crypto light, you can create separate mats on the basis of object, material, and the assets of the three sim. It is being used to create look development of the CG object or sim to like uh, create the separate parts, like this uh, I don't know what to call this, but on this part, and on this uh, part, and like this wire, and this light, and yeah, many of the things like that. So right now what you are seeing is actually, it is based on the asset. So, I will move to this script over. I will select the crypto material. So now this shows us the mask according to the our uh, materials which we have applied in the Maya or Max or wherever you work and find this one I mean course some date and yeah crypto object so crypto object and uh, crypto asset both work uh, almost same there is not much difference but it's always better if you enter both of them because sometimes both of them contains different data which can be uh, helpful sometimes yeah so it's uh, very easy to use you can just select this picker ad and you can control and left click on it yeah so when you have selected that part it will show you as a yellow and if you go to the alpha you will select the mask so you can just select it by that whatever you want and you will be able to see in the alpha chart and the picker revo like you have selected an extra part and you don't want to select this uh, pipe you can control and left click by selecting this picker revo and you can just unselect it and uh, this is preview just to visualize what you are selecting and this will show you only the mat and this will be only single selection and uh, let's say whatever you have selected and you just want to reset you can click on this clear button so it will clear the entire selection whatever you have selected that's on for the crypto mat. This is the mask output. If you want to change the channel on the mat output, then you can use it. Yes. So, this was the utilities. When there could be more actually. So, like, there is three new what I know, which is material ID, ID, and the object ID. So, ID are just like the crypto mats, like uh, separating this. Uh, blue one as a red channel this is a green channel and this is a blue channel and the material ID it actually gives the ID on the basis of materials like you have added any roughness map then you can render mask for it separately using the material ID and object ID also object ID is uh, almost like the crypto map not much difference and yeah and these were the utilities and there might be more and if you know more then please also let me know so I can study more about it Please let me know if you have any doubts or anything, something like that. And feel free to ask me anything. I will be happy to know. And only this was to cover in this video. I will come back with the more amazing tutorials. So till then, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So it can motivate me to create more. And also share with your friends. So they can also know these tricks. Okay, so only this was to cover in this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.